What's up guys and welcome to episode 1 of my AHK for RuneScape tutorial series. In this series I'm going to show you guys how to write your very own AHK scripts, starting from the simplest one-to-one -one, all the way to fully autonomous bots. In this episode I'm going to be showing you guys the basics and I'm going to put it all together at the very end for a simple but helpful blackjacking script. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoy and let's get straight to it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is download AutoHotKey. Uh, you're going to do this by going autohotkey.com, clicking download, and then clicking download current version. I already have this downloaded, so I'm not going to follow through with this, but as soon as you do, the executable file will pop up. Click on it, run through, and follow all the directions. This is going to download AutoHotKey and another program called Windows Spy. Now, Windows Spy is a super helpful piece of software that comes with this, but we're not going to be talking about it in this episode, so don't worry about it for right now. Now once you have AutoHotKey downloaded, we're going to move on to getting a text editor. Now as far as I know, every version of Windows comes with at least the basic notepad. That will work. Any text editor will work for this as a matter of fact, but I find that Notepad++ is a little bit easier. So you're going to follow the link then into the description that'll take you to the download section of Notepad++. It's just an upgraded version of Notepad. It looks a little bit cleaner and nicer. You're going to download the latest release, whatever it is when you're watching this video. And that's what we'll be using for the remainder of this tutorial series. So now that you have everything downloaded, we're going to minimize out of this. And we're going to open up a Notepad++ document. And so we're going to be writing our very first AHK script. And this is going to be super simple key remapping. And what that means is that we're going to take a key and we're going to make it have a completely different output. This is really popular before RuneScape allowed you to change your F keys. So if the would take out, say, an AHK script to do this because it was significantly more simple than going through the Windows process of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have an input and an output. So say we wanted to change our one key, one, so that's going to be our input key, to output a nine. So we're going to do one, colon, colon, nine. The nine is going to be the output. Up here we're going to file save as we can put it on our desktop and we're going to go down here to the save as type and we don't want it as a text file that's going to keep it in the text document that's not what we want we're going to put it to all types we're going to take the file name we're going to put it whatever you want I'm going to type example dot ahk this is important otherwise it's going to revert back to a text file we're going to save that now as you see right here when i hit my one key it just shows up with one but when we run the script and you'll see that it's running down here in the taskbar. It's going to be a green H. It says your script is running. Now we go over here and we hit the one key. It's going to come out as a nine. Now to close this script, we're going to go back to the taskbar, go back over to the green H, right click and click exit. The green H is gone. The script is closed. And we hit the one key. It's just the one now. So I know that remapping keys in RuneScape now, it doesn't have a lot of purpose. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete all this and we're going to type one colon colon, which is how we're going to start the script. And we're going to come down here. We're going to do curly brackets. Now inside these curly brackets is what's going to happen when we hit the one key. Now something maybe a little more applicable is being able to type a sentence every time you hit a key to send out maybe the grand exchange or whatever you might be doing. So what we're going to do is go between the curly brackets, tab over, type send with a capital S, now what this is going to do is the script is going to tell the computer to send these keys in this order. I'm going to type send buying girlfriend 50k. Now all this is going to do when you type 1 now is type out buying girlfriend 50k. However, as you know in RuneScape, that's not going to send chat. What we need to do is have it hit enter. So we're going to hit enter now. It's going to come down a line. We're going to type send again. We're going to tell the computer after it types out buying girlfriend 50k, we want to send, we can type curly brackets, enter. The curly brackets tell us that instead of writing out enter again, it's going to just send the enter key. Now we're going to save file, save as, buying girlfriend.ahk, click this, and we're all, again, we're going to say all types, so it saves it as a .ahk, save, now to show you guys how it's going to work, we're going to pull up our account here. Now if we hit the one key, it's just going to be a bunch of ones. 
But if we run our script, and again, we check down the taskbar to see that it is running. And we type the one key, buying girlfriend 50K. We do it over and over and over. So now what you've done is binded an action to a key, as opposed to just binding a different key to it. You've now said this key is going to type out this action. So we're going to go down here. We're going to close the script. We're going to minimize this. And we're going to move on to something maybe a little bit more useful. So now that you've learned how to map a set of actions to a key, we're going to take that and, and apply it. So we're going to file new. Just like before, we'll type our key, our input key. Type our curly brackets. Now what we're going to do is create a really easy dropping script. So basically every time you click the one button, it's going to drop down a certain amount of pixels and click drop on an item. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have it right click because you're going to hover your mouse over an item that you want to drop. We're going to have it click right. Then we're going to do a command called mouse move, which is a very useful command. It does exactly what it says. It moves your cursor based on what you input. So it's going to have four parameters that you can use. They are X, Y, the speed at which you want the cursor to move, and then a fourth one, which is called relative or rel for short. This one is optional. Now this one changes how the mouse move functions. Relative, when it's included, makes it to where everything that happens, so the X and the Y, that's relative to its current position. However, if you delete that, it's only going to mouse move over to the X and Y coordinate that you input. For this particular example, we want it to be relative to where it's currently at. So we're going to come back and the X, we don't want this to go left and right. X on the coordinate plane is left to right. So we don't want that. So we want zero. We're just going to be straight up and down right now. For the Y, I happen to know offhand that you need to drop down 35 pixels in order to get to the drop portion. From here, we want to move their speed. Now, speed on here, zero is very, very fast or instantaneous, whereas 10 or 15 is very, very slow. We're just going to pick a decently quick speed at five and then capital R E L for relative. Now we're going to include a command called sleep. Now this is just going to pause everything for a brief moment so everything can kind of catch up. This kind of helps to avoid any issues with maybe a lag or a ping spike or something. We're going to sleep for 250. This is 250 milliseconds or approximately one quarter of a second. And then we're going to have it click. Now this is just a standard left click. So what's going to happen here is you're going to hover over whatever you want to drop. And then when you click the one key, it's going to right click. It's going to move the cursor down 35 pixels relative to its current location. It's going to sleep or pause for a quarter of a second and it's going to left click. So let's save this. Dropping.ahk. Don't forget the AHK part. Save. Now to quickly demonstrate this, I have mined up some iron ore. I'm going to run the dropping script, move over to the first section, click the one key, and you'll see that it right clicks, sleeps for a quarter second, and then clicks the drop button. This may not be the most useful thing, but it demonstrates the properties that we've discussed so far. And this stuff can be taken much further than just dropping a few iron ores. So to prove my point, I'm going to show you guys how to write a very basic two button black checking script with what we've learned so far and the addition of one more thing called a function. Now a function, it looks exactly like this. The name of the function, open close parentheses, and then curly brackets. Now everything inside the curly brackets is what the function is going to perform. It's all the actions that it's going to do. So we're going to have it start out with right clicking. Sleeping 50 milliseconds after every action that we have it performed, just so everything stays caught up. We're going to move the mouse down. Now, again, left to right, we don't want it to move at all, so our X is going to be zero. We're going to have it move down 70 pixels at a speed of five relative to its current location. Sleep 50 again, and then click. We're going to have this sleep 50 again, of course, after every action. 
Now we're going to have it move back to its original position. So instead of going down 70 pixels, we're going to have it go back up a negative 70, which puts it up on the screen, 70 pixels at a speed of five relative to its current location and sleep 50. And that is all there is to the very first function. Now we're going to go to the second and last function. We're going to call this one pickpocket. And this is the pickpocketing action. So it's going to be a right click again. Now it's going to move the mouse down. However, it's only going to move down 40 pixels this time at a speed of five relative to its current location. Sleep 50, click, and then again, move back to where it initially was at a negative 40 pixels. So now that we have our two functions, everything that's inside of those functions is going, what's going to happen when the function gets called. So as of right now, not, this script does nothing. So what we need to do is we need to have our input action. We're going to call that one again. And when we click one, it's going to call the function. It's going to do everything inside of that. So we're going to type out the name of the function, knockout, open close parentheses. Now, when you hit one, everything that's inside of that knockout function is what's going to happen. So then we do two for the pickpocket. Then we're going to do a third one. We're going to do three. And this one's going to just be exit the app, which is the script itself. And this is how we're going to close it without going down to our taskbar. So now while we're using the script, all we have to do is click the three key and that's it. And we save this as blackjacking.ahk and we are good to go. So once you have your bandit lured to whatever you're going to go to, what you're going to do is go to your attack options and make sure they're hidden for NPCs. This is very important because if you don't do this, the script will not work. So we're going to run our black dragon script, move over to the very bottom of where he's at with about this camera angle and start. Click one to knock him out, two to pickpocket, just as you would normally, and then keep going back and forth. That is all I have for episode one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you guys haven't already, please feel free to check out my botting to max with AHK series. I'm kind of pushing the boundaries of what is possible with AHK and really seeing if I can max an account with it. If there's anything else you guys need or would like to see in the future, please feel free to let me know in the comments or join my Discord. The link will be in the description. There's me and several other people there who will help answer your questions about AHK. We share scripts, we share snippets of code, and anything else that might be helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.